Hi everyone, I'm Barbara Beck and I'd like to welcome you to Current. The ladies and I have a wonderful program lined up for you today as we look for ways to be refreshed, renewed, and empowered. We're going to be talking about what to tell our children when there is a disaster, a tragedy in our lives, maybe even a mass shooting. Basically, how to respond as Christians to evil in our world. It's unfortunately become a given. Evil exists and will be around until we meet our Savior face to face. So what do we tell our children and our grandchildren? How much is enough? What's too much to reveal to them? What is age appropriate? And then what about ourselves? How do we respond in a godly, productive way? We certainly don't have all the answers, but we do have a responsibility to act and react as Christians. There's no set precedent for this. So we're going to talk about it all today on Current and see what the ladies have to say about how they've learned to handle crisis in their own lives and even keep themselves and their families from hitting the panic button. Difficult subject, but one we need to be discussing. Welcome, ladies. It's good to be with you. And we have a special guest, Kendall Natal. Thank you so much for coming. And you are a registered mental health counselor, so you have a new perspective for all of us, and you're going to be helping us from a um, from more of a uh, professional perspective. So thanks for being here. What do you think, Kendall, about some of the things that, that we've been discussing in, in the opening about what is age appropriate and how do we handle crisis with our children and grandchildren? Right. Well, thank you for having me, Barbara. Sure. Um, yeah. And when, when crisis hits and when our children become aware of it, one of the things that we want to make sure that we do is gauge off of, off of them. We don't want to assume that they haven't heard maybe a TV program um, or talked to other children at school and found out so about what's going on. So we want to engage them and talk to them about what's going on in their heart, what they're feeling about it. Um, I know even we as adults sometimes want to push our feelings down and it's counterintuitive, but we want to engage our children in a conversation where they can learn to, that it's a safe place to talk about what their fears are, what's concerning them about what they know um, about the situation. What a, thank you for that. That's great. What about the other ladies? I know that we've talked, Kristen, about my grandchildren, and I'll say sometimes, well, well how did you respond? How did you talk to your kids about this? What, what have been some sort of concerns that you've had about this? Um, well, I think we all know our own children, and you know the what they can handle and what they can't handle. And so yeah. the things that I'll talk to my 11-year-old about will be different from the things that I share with my six-year-old. Um, for example, when the Pulse shooting happened, um, that was very prevalent in our community. It was in our back door. And so we had a lot of conversations about that and about helping and what we could do to help the people that had been impacted and affected. Um, when Las Vegas happened, they weren't quite as aware of that. So for my youngest, we didn't he didn't even he doesn't even know that that happened. And I feel like that's okay for my 6-year-old to not engage in yet another shooting conversation with him. So I think really for each individual child and each family, I think as parents, we need to really just understand what we what where our ch where our children are mm -hmm. and the detail with which we engage with them about some of these difficult topics. Yeah, my daughter Gabrielle, she's 13 and when the Las Vegas shooting happened, um, she said, "Mommy, why why does all this bad stuff? Why does it keep mm -hmm. happening?" And it's it's hurtful that you can't give them um, an answer to why it happens, all I can say to her is that, baby, we live in a fallen world. Yeah. And until Jesus cracks the sky, yeah. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we're gonna go through things like this. Mm -hmm. um, but we have the assurance because we are believers and because God does not break a promise, he is gonna come back for us. But we just have to be steadfast and understand that mm -hmm. though this happens, it doesn't stop life, mm -hmm. you know? something beautiful will come out of it. And that's what the Bible says, Romans 8, 28. Mm -hmm. um, something good will come of it. We don't know why, we don't understand why, but I know in the, re the reassurance that God is sovereign. Yes. And though our hearts break for tragedies like mm -hmm. this, we just had one in New York the other day, um, we know that God is sovereign and he's gonna take care of us mm -hmm. um, even when we're hurting. Mm -hmm. But I think that is the answer. I think when we say to our children, that we live in a fallen world, I think that is the answer. Mm -hmm. We're in a world that is filled with evil. Um, every, 
somebody doesn't know the same God or doesn't accept the same God that we serve. And so because of that, it makes it even more important for us to be able to talk about our faith and why we believe what we believe. Yeah. Um, my children are older, um, Kristen, and it's really funny because one half the time they're clueless. If I don't say, did you hear about because they're at school and they're doing what they're doing, so they may not hear the news. But because they're older, I will take the time to say, did you hear about this? Because I know that when they're out and about and they're at school or whatever, they're gonna hear it. And so I make the point, my youngest is 16. So we have to have that conversation so that he's at least aware of what's going on around him. And a lot of times I'll say to them, particularly when uh, we can't be with them, I will say, you guys need to make sure that you take care of each other and help them to be a little bit more aware of their surroundings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of times we just take for granted, particularly believers. Uh, we live with this thing where we just think, you know what, no matter what's going on, God is going to protect us. Well, some of the people that end up getting caught up in these situations, they are believers. Mm -hmm. And so it happens to believers as well. Right. But I think the answer is we live in a fallen world. Um, and so no matter what age I think a child is, when you start having that conversation based on your faith, you can remind them that this is not our home. We're here. We've talked about being in exile. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and we just have to deal with the tragedies as they come. Yeah, and I'm, I'm like Chris, and I've got different age children, too, and I think you have to know your child. You know, my biggest thing that I always want to put into my children is not to have fear, because the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And so, you know, the Bible also says, lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge the Lord. And so I think what I try to do is if they come to me and they say something, I always I say that same thing, you know, we live in a world that has fallen. There is just human nature that is, it's evil, you know? I mean, even in my own self, my flesh is awful. I, I thank God for His grace, but I also think that we have to let them know that Christ is our covering and He is sovereign and that we can trust Him. I think we really have to take the fear out of our children because, you know, I think that the enemy wants to use that on all of us is to get fearful of oh, what could happen tomorrow. And I just, I don't want to walk in that fear. I want to walk in my faith that my God shall supply all of my needs. Not that I'm not wise because he said to be wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. But I think it's important for us as parents to reassure our children that God is still on the throne no matter what's going on around us. That's a tough balance though. And I want to get your perspective on that, Kendall, because we want to not instill fear right. in our children, but we're still, are we helicopter parents if we pretend protect our children and don't allow them to go to concerts or, you know, they're, they're just, ha we just have to strike a real important balance there. How do you do that? Or how would you suggest Kendall from a professional perspective? Well, and I think, you know, of course, as we've been talking about age appropriate and decisions that you make for what you, what you allow your children to do, but you know, we are made in the image of God and the Trinity is in fellowship with one another. God made us to have a relationship with us. And so one of the things that um, we want to do as we're navigating the fearful fallen yeah. world that we live in is to make sure that our children know that they um, have that safe connection with us. And so when they're going out to something, we want them to come to us and talk about what fears they're having. We don't want to necessarily, I mean, yes, we want to encourage them that we, that God is sovereign and he is in control, but they're smart and they know bad things happen anyway. And so we don't want them to, to muster up this, okay, I've got to, you know, we want them to trust in God, but we also want them to take the safety of the relationship that we've created with them to come to us and talk to us about the fears that they're having as they're going about to maybe different different things where they know similar um, tragedies have happened in that type of environment. And it is such a different That's day good. and time today. You know, back in my day, we talked about stranger danger. Don't get in the car with anybody. Don't That's accept right. candy for anybody. But that was pretty much it. Yeah. You were not afraid of anybody else. You know, you could go. So I think the way that we're parenting and grandparenting today is totally different from back in my day. Well, and I think there's a difference between, if I can say this, I think there's a difference between 
instilling fear in a child and instilling wisdom. Yes. I think mm -hmm. I think you have yeah. to to make that separation because you want your children to come and talk to you. I mean, no offense to this, I'm I tell my children, you know, you don't go over there where I can't see you. Because I want to instill wisdom in you. The Bible That's says to be wise yeah. as a serpent, yeah. gentle as a dove. And so I think there is a difference between instilling fear and instilling wisdom. And I think I'm so glad that both of you brought that up because we do need to tell our children there is things to be aware of. Mm -hmm. I mean, even me, when I'm getting out of a car, you know, I'm not on the cell phone. I'm, I'm, I'm aware. Mm -hmm. Not because I walk in fear. It's because I walk in wisdom. Yeah. Right. And I, I think we have to really differentiate what that, that looks like. Yeah. I think the other That's part good. of that is that um, everyone has the spirit of discernment. I think that some are stronger than others. Yeah. Um, my uh, There's this book that it talks about the gift of fear, which is the same thing as discernment to mm -hmm. me. And, and so my children being aware when something doesn't feel right, mm -hmm. something's Good. wrong. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Or they say your spidey senses are tingling, mm -hmm. something's <laughs> off, <laughs> something is wrong there. And pay attention when mm -hmm. God is trying to tell you and instruct you, don't go there, don't go. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to your inner voice and whatever the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is speaking to you at that moment, pay attention because it could be truly uh, the difference between life and death. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing I've noticed about my children mm -hmm. is as long as I'm not fearful, yes, they're not fearful. Mm -hmm. We can have mm -hmm. open conversation, detailed conversation about incidents, but if I'm not panicking and frustrated and all of that, then they won't be. Because I think the, 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 the connection with our kids helps them. If we're good, they're good. But when I'm not settled about something, it just throws everything off in my house. Mm -hmm. My yeah. children will be frustrated. They will be nervous. They will be afraid because I'm afraid. Otherwise, they're good. I'm making you aware, and I want you to pay attention as you're out and about. Yeah. And yes, listening to because. Our children are intelligent, yes. and they right. know right from wrong because we've taught them. But sometimes they are on that phone, Carolyn, mm -hmm. and they're not paying attention to what's going on around them. Jonathan is just learning. Well, he'll get his driver's license um, in about a month. And he's a great driver, but I'm always saying to him, don't, don't touch the phone. Mm -hmm. Just leave it alone. You have to pay attention. It's not always you. It can be the other person that's mm -hmm. going to slam into you that you won't see. So it's the same concept when you're talking about other issues. Pay attention to people and what they're doing around yeah. you. Let's say yeah. our kids are not receiving the right cues from us. You know, they're not panicking, or they are panicking, mm -hmm. because even though we're not panicking, there is some anxiety in our children yeah. that maybe we're just sweeping under the rug and saying, oh, they'll be okay, because look at me. I'm the parent, and I'm, <clears throat> I'm pretty cool, calm, and collected. When in fact, Kendall, they're experiencing some serious kinds of anxiety. What are some warning signs that we need to look for, especially in younger children, and maybe mm -hmm. teenagers as well, mm -hmm that might say, hmm, maybe some intervention is necessary, maybe even some s professional counseling. Yeah, yeah. Well, our children, you know, oftentimes when they're stuffing down that anxiety and not coming to us and sharing it, sharing it with us, they can have stomach aches, they can have headaches, they might become more isolated and withdrawn than what they normally are. They might become a little bit more aggressive mm. than what they normally are. And so these might be all signs of the fact that they are dealing with anxiety and trying to handle it on their own and warning signs that we need to look for for um, to know what's going on inside them. So as a counselor, seek. you believe in seeking professional help? Uh, completely, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It kind of seems like uh, it's just how we as adults deal with stress, almost mm -hmm. what you're describing, mm -hmm. and the we suppress things and they'll come out in other ways. Um, we may yeah. gain weight, lose weight, um, chop somebody's head off with anger. Gain um, weight, gain uh, weight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're saying with our children, we just need to be mindful and know our kids. Like mm -hmm. you were saying, Kristen, Kristen <laughs> we, we, we should know our kids. So it's... Sure. Um, I guess it's just a matter of paying attention to them. Exactly. Well, one, one story or one quote that I found has been helpful, and you all have probably all heard it, but Mr. Rogers said it um, years ago, but that in times of crisis when he was scared, his mom would always tell him to look for the helpers mm -hmm. because the helpers mm -hmm. rush in. And so with some of the things that our country's been experiencing, that's um, something I've tried to instill in my kids. Yes, this horrible thing is happening, 
but look at all the people who are rushing in to help. Look at all the people who are giving That's blood, good. collecting water, collecting mm -hmm. supplies, you know, with the hurricanes. Whatever the disaster has been, I think there's always opportunity to step out of the fear and use um, some of that, what might be fear, for good yes. by, good. Um, by being involved in some helping yeah. operation. Yeah. That, that's a great point because the, the flip side of making sure that we want to have our children share their fears with us is we want them, their, their sense of safety has been disrupted hugely and we want to show them that there's a way that we can have impact in our world and so that can be a way of of helping them use that fear to impact others for good um, so that's a great and point. I love what Deborah said it I, I love that because I think it is so important to make sure that our talk track as parents and especially as believers I was glad you said that, is to make sure that we're speaking not only truth, but we're speaking it in faith yeah. and speaking it in because that's powerful how we, I, I hear a lot of parents sometimes if they're not careful, they're speaking that fear to their children and right. those kids are repeaters. It's, it's caught, not taught sometimes. And so I, I like what you're saying is, and I appreciate you saying that is we need to be careful and really making sure we're getting our prayer time, that we're getting our thoughts on before we're talking with our children and before we're speaking out. Because kids are listening even when we don't think they mm -hmm. are. They're yeah. listening. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it's a great opportunity. You know, we never want to have to deal with a tragedy. But if we're gonna if we're gonna be helpers, it's a perfect opportunity for us to be able to remind our kids that this is how we show the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when when you become a part of the helper, mm -hmm. It yeah. really does help children to be able to understand that yes, we live in this world, but we are still, as Carolyn always says, we're the hands and feet mm -hmm. of Jesus. Yeah. And so. to also our response to the bad guy. You know, I think we need to be teaching our children, hate the sin. Yes, absolutely, there is evil out there, but we gotta love the sinner. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, <laughs> we're all in positions where we have been the bad guy, Yes. you know. And so I think it's real important for us as parents and grandparents to uh, elicit responses of love, regardless, and again, ways that we can help and make the situation better. Uh, we're out of time, unfortunately. I hate that, but I want us to close with at least one scripture. Does anybody have a scripture that would be appropriate for this? I got one. Okay, go. Um, John 14, 1 says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust mm -hmm. in God, trust also in me. Good. Mm -hmm. I like good. That. That's a good one to end on. Kendall, Natal, thank you so much for being here with us thank today you and all of your me. great insights. And Tanika, I feel like I don't need to thank you because you're here now <laughs> so much of the time and we love having you on the Appreciate panel. Being on. And ladies, Deborah, Carolyn, Kristen, wonderful um, sharing with us today. So thank you ladies for being here. And thank you viewers for always being here with us as well. We want you to keep these conversations going at home. Continue to talk to your children and grandchildren on ways that they can have godly responses to get fear out of their lives, but to be wise and to um, be able to know how to handle these situations because unfortunately evil does exist in our lives. So uh, we want to help you. We want to help our kids and our grandkids and we've got more good stuff coming up. So stay with us. We'll be right back. everyone. We are What's Cooking Today in the Kitchen with the famous John Rivers <laughs> from Four Rivers Smokehouse in the Coop. Hi, Thanks brother. so much for being My here pleasure. with us again, John. Always is. Love Always this is. and love your creativity in bringing us all kinds of different dishes. What are we fixing today? Well, I hope you're in the mood for a little breakfast. I'm though. ready. Okay, now this is a French toast, but this is not your normal French toast. Of course not. I really amped this recipe up. We developed this one when we, did, when we opened the Coop, mm -hmm. and it remains one of our top sellers today. So a couple of little nuances that mm -hmm. we're going to do instead of regular bread mm -hmm. we actually use croissants yes okay because they're yes. already buttery they're right. really great flavor and instead of just putting normal plain butter mm -hmm. down to actually saute to cook them in we do a couple things we take the butter okay and we mix it with brown sugar okay okay and this is a secret ingredient you smell that Coffee. Coffee. Yum. Right. This is a little espresso you know, uh, coffee in there that we put That's in. That's what you're sauteing our French yes. toast in. And you wow. blend it. And this is what it looks like. Okay. okay. Not so pretty. So now you've got. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it's got not. lots of wonderful flavor. Yes. Before even the right. French toast goes in. Right. Right. 
All right, so let's build it now. Okay, so we need to make a cream, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bread, and you gotta mix it, let it sit in a little while with a mixture. If you go ahead and pour these in, this is we're gonna put cream in there. Heavy mm -hmm. whipping cream, as always. Uh, this one's a whole milk. Oh, it's just whole milk? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what makes, um, that's good. Do you know what makes cream heavier and thicker? Um, a fatter cow? No, I'm <laughs> No, no, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's a good one. <laughs> I know, right? I'm going to use that. Okay. <laughs> no, it's uh, butter. It's okay. the butter content okay. within the cream itself. And uh, the more butter. Mm -hmm. uh, the more yeah. butter, the better. Yeah, the more butter, the better. Okay. And That's a little another bit of secret ingredient, right? French, uh, or French, uh, a little bit of uh, vanilla. Oh, that okay. was not the, fr that's not the secret no, ingredient I'm thinking of. Vanilla. Okay, vanilla. Okay. And let's go ahead and now we're going to add some cinnamon because mm -hmm. you got to have cinnamon. Sure. When you make a French oh, toast. Oh, is that too much? No, 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 that's the good. The whole thing. It's actually it's portioned out, so. Oh, it so. smells good. Yeah, we have to give a little credit to your, um, you, you bring a wonderful helper with you. Absolutely. Jen, Jen is. Who gives us all these ingredients ahead of time and she works so hard to make these segments wonderful. She does. We we're love her. to bring her on one time. We should. We should yeah, surprise her. tell us her. what to do. And, and she will, right. We'll let, we'll let her do the cooking, right? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to soak these croissants in here. And I like a nice, big, fresh croissant mm -hmm. personally. Yes. Okay. It's got all of my cinnamon and all of my flavor right in there. Okay. And this is where your egg is, so that's what's going to actually cook okay. for you. Okay. Okay. Two or three eggs for per what? We don't know. We don't uh, care. Well, we How use three eggs. In okay. this particular one, I used a cup and a half of okay. whole milk. And we will have the recipe up on our website mm -hmm. viewers for you. Okay. <clears throat> so I've heated my butter over here. Okay. And I got all my cinnamon, all my eggs right on here, and I'm going to bring it. Now it's going to pick up all those coffee flavors. You want me to put the rest of these in here? Or are you uh, going to cook them all? I might as well. Mm -hmm. We got a crew well, who right? uh, might enjoy them. Might we, we love, let me tell you, viewers, we love when John Rivers comes because the crew and all of us get to, to taste and to eat and enjoy what you're cooking. So thank you for that. Oh, that's always my love pleasure. Love it, love it, so love it. Set this aside. So let me ask you, when you are cooking at home something special for breakfast, yes. you know, what will be something that you would typically make? Well, <laughs> for breakfast, mm -hmm. I might sleep through breakfast, but <laughs> if I ever did get up and fix breakfast, we've done waffles in the past, okay. pancakes, oh, yes. yeah, that's yes, special. I love those. Yeah, Absolutely. Sometimes though, with my grandchildren, all they want is hot buttered toast. Really? Yeah. So if they had something like this, they would be so excited. Mm. Well, I love, you know, it's so funny, we typically go out for a fancier breakfast. Breakfast. We find ourselves doing that, you know, unless when the kids are home. Yeah, they, they want to stay it. home. Oh, they love yeah. it when we cook. They want dad to cook, Absolutely. right? Yes. Yeah. I would never eat out if I lived at your house. <laughs> I would make you cook all the time. Well, actually, Monica, my wife, is a fantastic cook. Yeah? You know, she's a much healthier cook than I am, and uh, she is uh, pretty strict on her vegan diet, uh -huh. so that keeps me uh, honest and so healthy So she can't even eat the eggs. She could not eat this. Uh, she would not, but okay. uh, I would take her portion happily for her and, <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy it. Absolutely. Right. So really, that looks it, good. it doesn't take that long at all. It okay. makes the whole house smell so good. And it looks like it's burnt, but it's it's not. That's actually the caramelized oh, uh, yeah, brown sugar okay. and cinnamon on top. Uh -huh. Okay. Go ahead and plate these up nice and pretty for you. Very nice. Okay. Now I like, um, oops, let's take that off the heat. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love fruit um, on mine. So, you know, put some nice uh, blueberries. And we got some pretty That's strawberries so pretty. here. I love that we mix a little healthy with a little, uh, maybe not quite so healthy. Absolutely. And this is our syrup that we okay. make at the coop. Ah. And it is a bourbon maple uh, syrup that adds a lot of flavor to it. And hopefully one of these days we'll be able to buy that at the uh, grocery store. Yes. You yes, think? I hope so. You're working I, on I, that. I, I know right now your barbecue sauce is in certain grocery stores, it's right? It's in all the Publix. That's great. And uh, they're about to add all of our rubs, so. as a matter of Pretty. That is beautiful. I don't even want to mess it up, but I will. <laughs> I will go ahead and mess it up and let's see what this is like. John, a lot of times we don't get to talk about your personal testimony, but you've been a Christian for a long time. And the reason that we think John Rivers, Four Rivers Smokehouse and the Cooper successful is because of your generosity and your ability to share with other people, right? Isn't that one of your mottos? It is. That's the core of our business. You know, we started as a ministry in the garage, mm -hmm. helping other people, and we still run the business today just like that. Mm. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, between mm -hmm. the butter that goes into the croissant to all the, the little coffee flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, coffee is a great undertone. You put coffee in a lot of chocolate recipes. Yeah. Remember we did that yeah, one time? We, we did. brownies sometimes. Absolutely. And it's just a nice, stable level mm -hmm. that it gives to it. Mm. And I like, see how simple that was? How quick and easy? I don't, I don't know how you do it. I do not know how 
how you make things so easily in front of us. <laughs> if I tried this at home, I'm not sure. Well, Where, did you put nuts on this? Oh, you want some nuts? Absolutely. Well, I'm just you're curious because I know nuts are good for you. So yeah. these look like walnuts too, brain food, probably, right? Probably pecans. They're pecans. pecans. Yeah, they are pecans. Knowing my recipes, mm -hmm. I tend to favor those. But. Is this your, one of your favorites? This one is one of my favorites, yes. I don't eat a lot of sweet for breakfast, mm -hmm. but if I would, if I was going to get French toast, I would definitely get this French toast. Because you eat, we've made before, viewers, we've made John's granola, his special granola. You eat that every day with fruit, I do. right? I do. So yeah. there, Got a breakfast you know, granola. And here's oh. the thing, here's the thing. I like to do a balance in life. I mm -hmm. say, all during the week, I might eat healthy, and then on the weekends, I'm going to indulge a little bit, and I'm going to mm -hmm. have something like that, and it's not going to kill us, right? No, no. I think as long as it's important, you know, it's in proportion, right? And you, you don't go crazy about it. I think That's there's right. a nice balance. So we're calling this. This is your breakfast croissant, caramelized croissant. French toast. French toast. John Rivers for Rivers Smokehouse and the Coop. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Love, love, love. You want this recipe? Go to our website or to our Facebook page, and you can pick it up. Enjoy. We'll be right back with more viewers. I hope you got a lot out of our program today. It's not easy to acknowledge and talk about all that's going on in our culture. But listen, we've got to discuss difficult topics with our families so that we can hopefully better prepare them for when they face challenging times. Jesus told us in scripture, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I mean, sometimes it seems like evil has overcome the world, but don't be deceived. Our Lord is in control. He's with us through it all. His hand controls power and might. He rules this world. So why then is there so much pain? Why is there evil? This is no surprise. God told us there would be evil. We have to live in a world where we wrestle against powers, rulers of the darkness, spiritual host of wickedness. But what do we do? Scripture tells us to get ready for this war. Put on your armor, be strong, stay firm, fight the battle, and of course, pray. I pray the blood of Jesus to cover my loved ones every single day. And I believe that God does that. My daughter asked me just the other day, didn't Job have the blood of Jesus over him? Well, why wasn't he protected? I'm not sure anybody on this side of heaven has all the answers. In fact, God tells us that his ways are not ours, nor are his thoughts our thoughts. But we live faithfully. We trust God. And we do the best that we can, knowing that after this little vapor of a life is over, we will spend eternity with our Savior and Lord, our Heavenly Father, in paradise, where evil will no longer exist, where there will be no more weeping, no pain, no sickness, nothing but fellowship with God and our loved ones. And that, dear friends, is our note of hope for today. Thanks so much for joining us and God bless you.